Okay, so um, this is a this is a session which is the pros and cons of additions to, to Dynamics and whether you should build them yourselves or whether you should buy them and what are the pros and cons of each approach. Um, please, uh, interactivity is brilliant. So um, turn your microphone on and ask any questions as we go along. Um, the thing uh, particularly that um, we need to, to stow. Um, so I'm James. Um, I live out in the sticks, so my bandwidth is brilliant. I'll turn my camera on uh, just for a second so uh, you can see who you are, but um, I found it the presentation and the uh, the voice just does keep up a bit better if I turn my camera off. So, um, and you don't want to look at me anyway, so we'll, we'll give that a go. Um, um, so I guess, um, given that you've been on a few of these, you can hear me, everything's clear. Um, we've got 30 minutes for this session and I'll set that, ask the questions. We're going to be talking about uh, the new way of customising Business Central and specifically these things called extensions, um, per tenant extensions, which are your own custom extensions, uh, app source, which is where you can go and do these and, and upgrade implementations and how you can try them out. Um, and then we'll actually go and install one uh, quickly from AppSource and try it out. And we'll show you how that's really a, a five, 10 minute process. So extensions for us have been a real game changer. Um, uh, the difference really between this and the customizations that we made to historic uh, NAV is that they, they are on top of the standard application. Um, so that in effect, rather than taking the application from Microsoft and then changing it so that when a new uh, version comes, you have to change it again and you have to remember where you've changed it, which can be quite difficult uh, and time consuming. These actually just sit on top um, and they use things called events. Events are little uh, often described as hooks, just little uh, places in the standard code where the standard code goes, OK, do you want to do anything different at this precise point? And we can what we call subscribe to those events and say, yes, please don't post the journal like this, post it like that or, or add some extra information or wherever. And there are now tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of events throughout the Business Central um, scenario. Uh, events were introduced in 2016. So if you're on a later version, probably a lot of your customization will have been built um, using events, should have been built using events as they got through to the different Business Central versions and certain Business Central 14, um, they got a lot more events. They started to put more and more in the standard code. So the flexibility of what we can do via an extension became more and more uh, wide ranging. And so there's now, I would say, um, with the latest releases of Business Central, it's almost a case of anything you could do within the standard code, you could do as an extension. Um, might have to do it slightly differently. Um, sometimes you have to rethink your process, uh, but we can make it work. Because they sit on top of the standard code as discrete files, I mean, uh, there is a file called a .app uh, file that it creates, which has all of the customizations relating to that particular kind of set or change request. Um, and so they can be added or removed individually. And that's key because you can put something in there, try it out, and then take it out in two minutes. And if you go back to the uh, Navision uh, objects days, it would often take a developer, you know, uh, a day or more to add a external solution into your database. And so the cost of that meant that you you really had to be pretty sure you were going to use it before you committed to it. With extensions, you can put them in. You can put them into a sandbox that will show. Try them out. And if you don't like it, get rid of it or then put it in your production system. So very quick. You can have uh, optional dependencies. So you can have a standard uh, solution out of AppSource, so a third party solution. You can then extend the extension, which I know is a little bit of a strange concept, but it means that if you've got something from a third party that does 98% of what you want, you can go and add that final 2%. It doesn't mean you've got to create all 100% and start from scratch, which again is a bit of a different concept. And again, that just sits on top of the third party add-on. 
you can even extend your own extensions if you want to, but um, that's probably not best practice to make it overly complicated that it needs to be. When you uninstall an extension, it puts the data that belonged to that extension in a repository, in a holding area. If you later uh, reinstall it, um, that data can come back, uh, will come back. So what that means is you can uninstall, uninstall a previous version, upgrade it to a later version, and the data from the previous version will magically be there, and you can put a routine into to change it if you need for the for the later version. So a lot of flexibility. Been around. Um, the first extensions were introduced in 2017. That was a little bit of a full start, if I'm honest. Um, I wouldn't use those uh, now. And in fact, they re rewrote it um, and update it to V2 extensions, version two extensions in 2018. So that moved on quite a bit. Um, uh, but certainly since 2018, we've been using them extensively. And we've lots of customers now that recent implementations that are total extensions. That means upgrade is really quick and easy because we just uninstall those extensions, upgrade the base, and then put the extensions uh, back on top. So it is, uh, it's reached, finally reached that utopia of upgrades being certainly minutes, if uh, you know, hour at most, uh, and that's including a test cycle. So you have two types of extensions. You have what we call per tenant extension. This comes down to all of this was written for the online SaaS version. Uh, at Business Central, uh, and per tenant means they are specific to you. Um, you know, uh, very few clients use uh, Business Central as it comes out the box. Usually there's some changes, even if it's just to put different logos on uh, document layouts or add different fields onto the invoice, etc. cetera. And, and we would do those now and put those into an extension so that they're preserved. They go through um, uh, the upgrade cycle. Um, so, if we have, uh, say, some changes to the customer area, maybe some changes to the sales order area, or maybe some changes to, uh, I don't know, something in warehouse, we would do those into three different extensions. And that means you can package those up into quite discrete areas. You can put them in, test them individually, and then test them collectively. So rather than having to wait till you've got a complete set of objects that all work together, um, you know, in, in years gone by with object based, we used to want to complete everything and test everything before we handed it over. Now we can hand over individual extensions, so it is much faster. There's the upgrade uh, cycle I've already talked about. All these extensions are created in a new language, uh, AL. It used to be CAL when we uh, modified it within uh, NAV, uh, the NAV client, development client later on. Um, now it's moved to a, a new VS Code Editor, which is a very common editor for um, uh, writing all sorts of different languages, but there's an extension to that editor. Extensions is not uh, it's not a concept that's unique to uh, Business Central. It's it's quite wide ranging, but there's an extension that makes it talk to Business Central, either the online version or the on-premise version, um, and you can fire that up and and, and actually I would claim. It's much more modern experience. It's anybody who's done any sort of development uh, process in the past will be able to use that, uh, um, you know, and uh, create something that's that's worthwhile with it uh, very quickly. Um, when those upgrades come out, sometimes changes that Microsoft have made can ch can break your extension. So you uh, every six months when there's a major upgrade, particularly but potentially on SaaS every month, you might get an email saying your upgrade failed because of your extension. You need to be able to go and sort that out. Um, as a partner, we have a whole process um, called DevOps for uh, predicting where those are going to fail and going and sorting them out before you actually hit them. Um, but uh, it, it is a factor. Where you buy from a third party, they will do that work and they get advance notice of what Microsoft are going to launch. And so they they do that. And so when we just had uh, Business Central 16, um, 2020 wave one rolling out on the 1st of April, and uh, you know, all of the extensions that we have in AppSource, we had uh, were already compatible with it on the first day of rolling out. One interesting fact is that those of you from a NAV background will remember you have to pay for objects and you have to pay for development tools. 
That's not the case uh, where you use extensions and the development tools for uh, SAS are free of charge. So objects for SAS on the SAS licensing model are free of charge. If you uh, still have the perpetual licensing model, you still have to buy uh, the same objects you always had, even though you're using those through the new development model. This is a, an email I just put this in to show, um, you know, this is one that we got recently, um, 8th of the 4th, you'll see, and one of the extensions, not ours fortunately, uh, for one of our customers um, uh, failed the upgrade cycle from 15.3 to 15.4, and it gives the reasons why it failed. So we, in that instance, have gone off to uh, the company called Insight Works and um, you know, asked them what they're going to do to, to get the update compliant. But that's the process that you get. You get these emails saying we changed something. It's what we've changed has broken what you did. Um, so you, you need to go and do that. But that, that's usually a fairly straightforward process. Um, can't always guarantee that, but usually it takes us a few minutes just to sort that out. Buying third party add ons is a is a great um, you know, always buy if you don't uh, if you can buying a third party. Uh, there is an online marketplace called AppSource.com. Um, I'll pull that up in a little while and we'll have a look. Um, Add-ons are maintained by the person who publishes it into AppSource. So you don't have any, you shouldn't have any concerns with those updates, albeit I just showed you an email showing one, but they'll sort that out. You don't have to pay any fees for that. It's just part of the subscription, as you would expect. There are now over 700 apps for Business Central in AppSource, all sorts of different things. Um, I would say probably a lot of them, um, you know, I don't know precisely how many are not applicable unless you want a uh, South Korean payroll. Uh, you know, that's probably not going to float many people's boat here in the UK. Um, but so they are that is worldwide and there are lots which are specific to a specific country or, or some uh, specific scenario that probably won't apply for you. But there are a lot now and all of the common apps like Jet. Uh, Continia and and so on that we we use um, all of those have had to get into AppSource because um, it, it's important. All AppSource is 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 uh, a way of delivering the application into your business central. If you are on premise, you can use this dot app file that I talked about earlier, and most vendors will give you the choice of both. If you are going to buy from a third party, I think there is a degree of due diligence you need to do. Um, if you're, uh, you know, if it's just something that makes a particular screen a little bit easier to use, but you know, standard is maybe a little bit long-winded. This is a good shortcut. Provides you information the way you want to see it. You know, the risk of that, if it if it broke, you could just uninstall the extension and carry on the way that you did beforehand. So the risk isn't that great. So I would take a risk for those kind of almost cosmetic, nice to have extensions from a vendor that I wasn't particularly confident in maybe, because if they stop working, I stop paying for them, I un uninstall it and go and find a better solution. If it's something that is business critical, you know, you can't ship product without this working, then I think you need to do a bit of uh, checks to say, who is the publisher? It's not one person in their back room in the evening. Um, there are a few of those, um, you know, people from our industry who, uh, done something in their own time and then published it into AppSource. So it is worth a check just to see how serious um, uh, the ISV is, how much documentation, what the support process is. Um, as a partner, it's difficult for us to support all 700 of those applications and know them. So uh, that, that's a question of whether we can provide good support um, or you need to go back to the publisher. And in that instance, it, what time zone is the publisher on? You know, uh, we have customers for our Clever Dynamics brand, which are in the US um, and Australia. So clearly those support calls come in um, you know, at odd times of the evening and night, um, and we have to deal with that. Does it play nicely when you put all these things together? Um, do, do, do they work well together? Uh, each extension from a third party very rarely knows about the other extensions you've got there. So the process flow might not be as smooth across the different pieces uh, as you would expect. Um, you know, and that's where a dependent extension 
can actually make that work by just putting that extra little link in between the two uh, third party extensions. But file a per trial um, test devil is in the detail, as you all know. Uh, if you're experienced Dynamics uh, users, you will know that getting it right, getting it nailed down can take a little bit of time and you just need to trade out with your particular scenario to see um, where that works. So uh, enough PowerPoint. I don't know how much you've seen of PowerPoint this morning, but um, let's go and have a look uh, perhaps at, um, at, at Business Central. So um, as part of the SaaS, I don't know if you've seen this this morning, but you get uh, these different environments that you can uh, fire up. And um, uh, as part of that, oh, let me just go back. Um, I've got one here where I've, I'm in, in private browsing. Um, so I've just logged into what we call a demo tenant and uh, I've got a production instance of it here. So I've got my live business central, if you like. I can go in and very quickly create a new uh, instance. So a copy of my live and, and we call that uh, a sandbox. It's just somewhere to play in, um, I think is that. Um, we go, I'm going to make it type sandbox. I'm going to copy the live production environment, and I'm going to quickly create that. Ooh, something went wrong. Right, OK. All the best demos. Let me just try that again. If not, I'll move on because I don't have time. Yeah, OK, I'll go and do this in production. So while that's uh, just starting up my production instance, I'm here in Business Central. If you want to see what's installed on top of the standard uh, set, you can type extensions. And the extension page will come up and you know there's lots in here which are from Microsoft as standard. Now, interestingly, one of the changes that was made late last year is you now have the system application OK, and you have where is it? The base application here. So actually the core application, you know, the general ledger, the sales ledger, um, the inventory production, that's in the base application. So everything is now an extension, even the stuff that comes from Microsoft. So you are building on top of their standard extensions. So um, when I go to search, um, one of the things I can do is uh, I can search for something that perhaps isn't in the standard application. So if I start uh, searching for Clever, and I think uh, one of the earlier sessions was on Clever Credit. And so there is, a, it's showing us at the bottom of this list, um, it's not installed right now, but it's showing at the bottom of this list, Clever Credit um, on AppSource itself. So I'll uh, click on that and it goes to AppSource. And there's the page as if I'd navigated to AppSource directly. I'm just going to click on the free trial here. And I have to give it permission. And go continue. And what that then does is take us back to Business Central to complete this process. Okay. And it says, do I want to install? And I go, yes. And that will sit there and install that extension now. Just um, while I'm doing that, um, if I'm not installing, uh, I'll show you the front screen of AppSource as well. So you can go to appsource.microsoft.com. Um, you can come in here and uh, start to search if you want to. Um, clicking on the Dynamics 365, um, where is it? We go. So I could find. again at the same apps uh, and others by other people so you can come in here and search be aware that there's apps in here for all the different dynamics 365 uh products and, and you know that's a large product set um so you can go and drill down and um see everything and you can set it so that you just see business central which is probably what you want to do um so there um there's the ones that we've got, but you can come on here and see loads. So you know, there's, a, there's a point of sale solution. There's one for rentals. Um, 
there's all sorts of different solutions on here. Uh, some of them very small, some of them much bigger. Um, so uh, Vietnam language pack. You know, I did tell you that there was uh, there was stuff from all over the world um, in here. So if I go back to Business Central now um, and go back to my extensions page, you can actually see it's installed Clever Credit. Um, click on that and I can see that uh, it, it, it's there. Um, you can also see actually it's installed a couple of others. So these are dependent extensions. So these are ones that it needs for Clever Credit to work. And if I go um, yeah, you perhaps saw this a little bit earlier where I can go to Clever Credit on oh, no, go to the Clever Credit setup. Uh, do what, whatever I want to do. So um, there, there it's working. Um, so I can try it out and, and it's fully integrated into my Business Central at that point. If you're on premise, um, we have to take a dot app uh, file and we have to run a little bit of PowerShell that puts it in. It is, um, you know, PowerShell is not quite as friendly as this. Uh, you need to know the syntax of the commands. But I would if it took one of our people 10 minutes to install it, um, I think that's a that's a reasonable period of time. We probably spend longer connecting onto your system uh, and copy the, the app file on than we do actually install it. So again, uh, maybe I want to uh, now decide that, you know, I don't like this. Uh, I want to get rid of it. So um, I can go back to that extension and I can go uninstall. And it was as fast as that. Um, you know, um, I, I would probably go and uninstall the other uh, two as well. And just take those, take those out. So tidy up properly. And just to show, I mean, Microsoft, uh, there's a Microsoft extension here for Dynamics GP Intelligent Cloud. I'm never going to use that. We didn't, you know, we've never used Dynamics GP, Microsoft are trying to migrate the GP uh, Great Plains customer base over to Business Central now. Um, so I can I can uninstall that as well if I want to get rid of that. Um, you know, taking that is out is as easy um, as taking anything else. I wouldn't uninstall the base application and the application because Business Central will not do a lot if you, re you remove those. But now when I'm back at the search, I'm clever. Now, there's nothing in the search for pages to go to and I'm back it's looking up stuff from app source as an alternative because it can't find anything in the core application so putting things in and taking them out um, if, if that sandbox had worked I could have copied my production to my sandbox put the, the app in tried it out and then taken it out uh, as really so you haven't got a lot to lose by trying these things out uh, it, it's very quick um, one of the questions was, you know, we talked about the dev environment and um, I just want to show you this. Apologies for showing you a little bit of code, but I've created a, a quick little extension which um, has uh, adds a, a sample text field to the customer. So we have these objects now called table extensions. So this table extension is extending the customer table and it's adding a sample text field and then that that uh, page extension is ext extending the customer list um, and uh, adding it to the customer card as well. So literally took me 10 minutes to knock that together. Um, it's connected up to a specific tenant ID. So my Microsoft Cloud sandbox and tenant ID one I created earlier. And I can go view command and I can go uh, publish without debugging and that will install the that customization into that tenant and make it work. And that's now there and working. So if we go back to uh, this particular sandbox. Sandbox, if I publish to the right one.
there it is. At that point, I can go and um, uninstall it again. Um, if I go across to the customer table, uh, where's my customer? If I pull up a customer card. And you actually install it. All the best live demos, huh? I didn't actually try this one out. Uh, okay, I'm not sure why that's not appeared on my customer card like I expected it to, but I've clearly done uh, something wrong there. Maybe I need to just refresh the tenant. But um, while that's happening, because I'm aware I'm running out of time, um, that's the point to perhaps open up for questions. Um, what I think this does do is it means that customization is not perhaps, you know, it, customization, every, a lot of clients say, can we stick to standard? Um, can we remain standard? Well, one, what is standard? Because having the base application as your standard plus different add-ons, you know, very rarely do we implement Business Central on its own with just the base application. Um, other than that, I think... Uh, so that there's usually one or two or three or 10 add-ons from different solutions. So is that standard, is that not standard? And um, even then, I think, you know, uh, whether it's your own per tenant extension or whether it's a standard uh, add-on from AppSource, um, I, I think you know, doing that is now a very much easier process to manage and go through, um, less risky than it's been uh, uh, historically because of that uninstall option just gets you out of jail if something uh, somebody does put something in that breaks. And, and I think the upgrade process as well, we're just layering those on a new base application. Um, it is so much easier than it used to be. So that allows a much more kind of agile, fluid system that can progress regularly um, without the big trauma of, of that kind of five-year upgrade cycle um, that used to be the case. Um, and making those per tenant extensions, as you can see, is a, is a quick and easy process. And actually, you just need the expertise. You don't need uh, the partner license and so on that you've had in the past.